Now you spend hours, days, weeks, months, whatever it's going to be, crafting the perfect looking website with amazing content, all ready to do exactly what you want you to do. But before you go ahead and launch it, let me go through some common WordPress website mistakes, and more importantly, how to solve them or avoid them in the future. So first off the bat, we need to be talking about where all of your website files are going to reside. In other words, the hosting company you're going to pick for your website. Now, there are a couple of things that I think are incredibly important when you're looking for a hosting company. First of all, you really need to do your own due diligence. I can give you some recommendations based upon my experience. However, yours may differ. So always do your own due diligence to find out what has everything that you need before you invest your money in it. So I'm going to provide a couple of options, and these are ones that I actually use myself and I do pay for every single month. So first of all, we've got SiteGround. Now SiteGround is a very simple entry into working with hosting. It's very much hand-holding, so if you're new to hosting, this may be a really good option. In my experience, I found the support has been very, very responsive. There's 24-7 support, and I didn't have to wait long to get help and support back for some of the queries that I had. Had. The other thing that's very useful is that it's not particularly expensive, or at least for the first 12 months. And this is something you do need to be aware of. Any pricing you're looking at is going to be for 12 months, and then it will increase from year two and beyond. So if that's an issue, you just need to be aware of it. But take a look at the options it has. You can see we can start off from as little as $2.99 per month. This is pounds, not dollars. And it will then increase to $11.99 per month from year two onwards, plus any applicable taxes. Even on the lowest tier, you're going to get things like SSL options. You're going to have a plenty of resources to get you started. And if you want to upgrade, you can upgrade very easily. Next on my list would be Cloudways. Again, this is a service that I've been paying for and I still pay for every single month. Cloudways is a little less of the beginner friendly. You do need to have a little bit more understanding. However, what this gives you is the ability to have pretty much full control for most of us that don't want to get into more complex setups over your hosting, your server, and if you want to scale things up, you can scale things up relatively straightforward. And again, the pricing isn't that expensive. You can start off for a very low cost of around about $14 per month. And again, you have things like your SSL certificates and so on included in this. So there's no additional costs for some of the key things that you need to have installed. Next on the list is Hostinger. Again, this is one of those more cost-effective entries into hosting, but it has a range of different hosting options available, starting from as little as $2.59 per month. I've recently been testing this out. It gets good reviews across the board, so this is another option you may want to check out. And again, you have a range of different hosting options from single website hosting right the way up to more advanced hosting options. And again, the pricing structure is relatively simple. But as always, check out the year two on cost for any of these options if they have an introductory price. So picking good, solid, reliable hosting with good technical support is the first and probably one of the most important things you're going to do when you launch your WordPress website. Next on the agenda is having a backup plan in place. And you should never underestimate how important having backups in place is when you have a website. There's a couple of ways in which you could approach this. Most hosting companies, as part of your account, will have some form of backup option. For example, if we take a look at SiteGround and security, we've got backups, and inside there, we can go ahead and see any of the backups. You can also create your own manual backup. It's useful to have, but I wouldn't rely on it because this is connected to the hosting account where your website resides. So if something goes wrong with the hosting account, you're a little bit buggered, as it were. So the better way of dealing with this is to make sure you've got your own backup plan in place that is stored external to your hosting account. For me, I use WP Vivid Backup Pro. However, the free version gives you more than enough to handle backups, both automated backups and manual backups, scheduled as you need them without spending a single penny, dollar, dime, or cent. So all you need to do is go ahead, install the plugin, and inside the dashboard then of WordPress, you'll have a new entry called WP Vivid Backup, Inside there, you can choose backup and restore, and then you can choose where you want that backup to go. In other words, you can save it locally onto the same server as your website, not recommended for the same reasons as I've said with the hosting way of backups. The better way is to connect this up to some form of free cloud storage or paid cloud storage. So for example, you can connect it up to things like Google Drive, Dropbox, which has free accounts, 
a range of different places you can store this. And once you've done that and connected up the one time, you can then go ahead and do manual backups of either the entire site itself, so database and all files, or you can choose between just the files or just the database. And you can just click backup now, or you can use the schedule option to enable scheduled backups, and any backups are taken to a different location. And if you need to run things back, you can do it very quickly and easily using WP Vivid Backup. Again, like I say, the free and the pro version. So backups are incredibly important and are relatively simple and straightforward to set up with free versions like WP Vivid Backup. Next up, let's talk security. So making sure you've got at least something like iTheme security installed to make sure you've got some level of security installed on your website is incredibly important. And iTheme security is the one that I choose, but there's plenty of other options out there like WordFence and so on. So again, check them out, do some reviews, do a little bit of research and find out what you like. For me, I like iTheme security and I'm using the free version of this. I've never paid for this, so you'll see exactly what I see. So once you go ahead and install this, you'll have a new entry in your dashboard called security. And the first time you load this up, you'll go through the setup wizard and you can go through and answer various different questions, choose what site you're on, those kinds of things, whether it's e-commerce or blog or whatever. And it'll ask you questions and it will go through and set everything up for you. For most users, that wizard is more than enough to get you up and running doing what you need to do. But if you want to get in and start tweaking things, you can do that using a tool like iTheme Security. Make sure you keep everything updated. So when there's new updates for plugins, themes, and all those things, update your website. Keep on top of it, and that should minimize the risk of any kind of security issues in the future. So next on the agenda, we have to talk about themes, how our website is going to look if we haven't started designing it. One of the nice things about WordPress is there are literally tens of thousands of amazing looking themes out there you can access, many of which are free. But not all themes are created equal. Some are coded and created better than others. For this, I'm going to go through three that I would highly recommend you take a look at if you're looking for a theme to start building your WordPress website with. Now, the nice thing is all three of these have very fully featured free versions, which may be more than enough for 90% of use cases. Now, first up, and in no particular order, we've got the Bloxy theme. Now, I've been using the Bloxy theme on the WP Touch website for the best part of probably two plus years. I use the pro version, but there's also more than enough inside you for on the free version to get you started to do pretty much most of what you want. You want a header and footer builder? It's included. You want a fast loading, lightweight website? This is a great theme to do it with. You want it to work with common page builders or just with Gutenberg? Again, you can do that with Bloxy. Try the free version out because it's very fully featured. And like I say, we'll probably do more than enough for most use cases. Next on the list is Astra. Now, Astra is probably one of the most downloaded themes on the WordPress repository right now with over two. 0.3 million active websites using Astra. That's pretty phenomenal. And like I say, the free version has an awful lot included in it. If you wanted to work with any of the kind of normal tools like Elementor or anything like that, it'll work with it. You want to use it with Gutenberg, you can do that. It even has access to its own Spectra set of Gutenberg blocks. So you can use this alongside it to get a really fast loading website using native Gutenberg functionality. Check out Astra, that's a really good option. And third and finally, and like I say, no particular order, is probably one of my favorites and one that I've been using an awful lot is Generate Press. Generate Press, again, as you can see, nearly 5 million downloads on this and with over a thousand five star reviews. I think you can say it's a pretty good theme. But this is a little bit more bare bones as a theme. So if you want something that has all those bells and whistles, this isn't it. But if you want something that's a very, very fast loading website, gives you a really solid starting point and works well with Generate Blocks, which is their kind of sister product. Again, the free version has an abundance of options. Generate Press is a really solid starting point. And it's just going to give you a really good starting point with any of these three. Whichever one you decide to work with, I don't think you'll be disappointed. Now, one of the other things that I think attracts people to WordPress is the sheer number of plugins that are available to do well, pretty much anything you'd ever wanted to do. The downside is, well, you can install an awful lot of plugins to just get yourself into an absolute pickle. I always recommend keeping things to a bare minimum. Install what you need and nothing more. You can see on a typical website, this is the kind of thing that you would need. We've got our security, we've got our SEO, we've got our optimization tools, we've got our builder, in this case, Spectra, and we have a backup plugin. 
Most of the other things are superfluous and we could get rid of them. For example, once the starter template is installed, I can delete it. I don't long, no longer need that plugin. So it's always good practice that once you've finished and you no longer need a plugin, get rid of it because it just removes the problem and potential for updates and security issues moving forward. Keep your bare minimum, only install what you need, remove what you don't. Now, when you set up your WordPress site, one of the things you're going to have to do as part of the installation process is use a username and a password. One of the key things that people do when they set things up, when they're new to this, is they leave the default admin username. This in itself is a security issue. Never do that. Now, for argument's sake, let's just say that you have a site that admin is the kind of default administrator and you want to get rid of that, which you should do. The easiest way of doing that is to come in to the user section, add a new user, give them a username that's a bit more complicated, copy their email address, and then go ahead and either generate a password or use the password that's in there, and then just set them as an administrator. We'll say add a new user, and we now have a new admin user with the same level rights as our admin. So all you need to do now is log out of the account with the admin as that username, then log in with your newly created account, delete the admin user with the admin username, and then that should get rid of any problems. So that's the easiest and the quickest way of dealing with that problem, should you have it on any of your websites. But please do make sure you get rid of admin if you have that anywhere on any site you have. Now, another area that generally can cause issues moving forward is not changing the permalink structure. Now, you're probably thinking, I don't even know what a permalink structure is, Paul. Well, don't worry about it. Let me just quickly show you how to change it, why to change it, and just explain briefly what it even means. So if we come into the settings in the dashboard, you see there's an option called permalinks. Let's choose that. And inside there, you can see there's a lot of different types of links. In other words, this is the structure that will be used for someone that's accessing a page or a post on your website. And ideally, you want this to be as simple and as logical as possible. By default, in a lot of cases, plain might be selected. And as you can see, you've got your domain, which is the first part, which in this example is very long, but this is a test one. But afterwards is the link structure. In other words, the permalink, the permanent link to that page. And as you can see, you get this little question mark, P equals one, two, three. What the hell does that even mean to anybody? And then underneath, you can have ones that are based upon the day and the time and then month and date. And they just look rubbish. The best one to use in 99% of cases is the option for post name. And as you can see, this gives you a much more logical kind of set of links. So it'll say sample dash post, whatever the name of the post is or the page or whatever it is, that's what the link will be. But do this right at the beginning when you create your website before you start adding content so you don't end up with any potential problems with links later on. One of the first things you should always do. Next on the list is no index. Now you may be thinking, Paul, I don't understand what no index is. And to be honest, you don't really need to understand that well. You just need to make sure that when your site is live, it's not turned on. But let me explain what it is very quickly anyway. You'll see at the top, it says no index is on. No index basically tells search engines any of the pages on your website or posts or any content should not be added to the search results. So your site won't be found. That's the only thing you need to understand. So all you need to do is that's great when the site is in development and you have test content on there and things. You don't want the search engines to find it. But when you launch it, you do in 99.9% .9 of cases. And to change this is very easy. Again, we're going to come into our settings. And under our settings, we've got the option for reading. And you'll see Search engine visibility, discourage search engines from indexing the site. So when you're ready to launch and you want the search engines to find it and start actually spidering and looking for that content, just click on that and link it, save changes, and you'll see that now disappears from the top, that's disabled, and now the search engines can and will start to find the content on your website moving forward. Again, like I say, do this when you're ready to launch and not before, so you don't end up with content that's not intended to be on there, being found accidentally. Now, speaking of finding your website, you're going to need to have some way of the content being found, adding things like page titles and meta descriptions, all those really useful things. This is where you need to have an SEO or search engine optimization plugin installed. And there are various different options available from free to premium. My recommendation personally, and what I've been using and paying for for the last three or four years is SEO Press. Once you install this, you'll then have access to the SEO tools. But there are plenty of other great free options 
options out there like rank math and so on so if you want to check other ones out by all means do them like I say seo press i've always been reliably using this one and it's always given me the results that i need so once you've installed the plugin you come into your site and go into any of your posts or pages you'll see you'll have a new entry at the bottom and this is your SEO options. And here you can set things up like the title for the actual page or post you're looking at. You can set up custom titles, description and content images and so on for social media. Great if you've got content you want to be shared and you want to have control. Then you've got advanced options so you can set up more advanced things inside you. For most users, you probably never need to re even go in there. And redirection, just in case you accidentally update a piece of content and you want to have the old page or post linking to the new one, you're going to handle that using the redirection option inside you. And you can choose what you need. There's also the options then as you start writing content to check out your target keyword or key phrase and then it'll find out looking at the content where you can improve things where things are already looking good so you can optimize your content inside the page or post there's a lot more you can do with a tool like seo press but for most users this is where you're going to spend the bulk of your time doing anything to do with seo and the free version comes with more than enough for most users to make sure your content starts to rank in the search engines without too much effort now, the final thing in my list is all about image optimization. You want your website to be fast. And if you've created a website using one of the themes I've talked about and you optimize things with good hosting, you don't want to kill all that hard work by having massive images that just take hours to download on a mobile device. So you want to make sure you optimize your images. First of all, we've got Short Pixel, which integrates into the actual dashboard itself. And inside there, you can optimize images. You can have control over those. So if you come into the media library, for example, and we take a look, in our media library and you'll see this gives us all the information about how much the image has been optimized during upload or if we run the service afterwards and you can see we can choose to optimize this particular image so you can have this running and dealing with all this in the background it will retrospectively deal with any images that have previously been uploaded if you upload this plugin after the fact and the other option is to use something like WP Compress. Again, another one of the tools that I've used. And the nice thing with a tool like WP Compress is you can set this up to actually compress when you upload the images on the server itself, or you can actually use it to optimize the images on their own CDN. So it takes the weight and pressure off your hosting and deals with it on their servers. However, these do require paid plans if you want to access some of these more intermediate advanced features. So those are the 10 common mistakes that I want to cover in this video and more importantly, how to fix them or avoid them. Hopefully you found this useful, but if you've got any other areas you think that I should have covered, let me know in the comment section down below. Links to everything in this video is in the description. My name is Paul C, this is WP Tuts, and until next time, take care.